The final section in this unit covers departures from linearity. Now here we're talking about primarily outliers. Outliers are points in your scatter plot that do not fit the overall trend. Typically they're going to have large residuals and they're typically going to be either outliers in one direction, like only the X direction or only the Y direction. So let's take a look at an example that has three different outliers put into the data so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we see three points that I highlighted in yellow, red, and blue. And these are points that I added to our scatter plot for the size and the price of several houses. Let's first talk about this yellow one that is an outlier in the Y direction. Now, why is this point an outlier? Again, it doesn't fit the pattern. It's actually a fairly small house at about 1,800 square feet, which is not an unusually small or big house. Because again, it's not an outlier in the X direction. But for that square footage, it has a very high price tag. Maybe it's in a very expensive, like in San Francisco or something like that, where even small houses cost a lot of money. Again, it doesn't fit the pattern. For a house of that size, it should have a much lower price. Then we see this point in blue. This is an outlier in the X direction. It is a very large square footage house that has a very average price. So again, it's about an I don't know, maybe about an 8,000 or more square footage house, and it only has a price tag around $300,000. That, again, doesn't fit the pattern. The pattern should be a house that's really big should have a much higher price. So, again, it's an outline the X value. And then we see this red point. Now, I want to make a, a really important comment here that this red point is actually not an outlier because it is an outlier in both the X and the Y direction. And when you're looking at a scatter plot, outliers are typically outliers in one direction only. Because the red point is an outlier in both the X and the Y, it actually fits the pattern. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come off the pattern. It fits it. It is a very large house that has a very expensive price tag, which fits exactly what the data should be doing. Now, the other thing I want to note is that outliers in a scatter plot often have big residuals. And you could definitely agree that this yellow point is going to have a huge residual value. This blue point is going to have a huge residual value. And the red point has a actually a very small residual value. Again, showing that when you are a point that's an outlier in both directions, you're technically not an outlier overall for that scatter plot because you fit the pattern. The other thing I want to comment on is if the yellow or blue points were added it's going to weaken my correlation because I'm adding two points that have large residuals that don't fit the pattern. My correlation is going to get weaker. If I remove the yellow and the blue point, my correlation is probably going to get stronger. But that red point is actually going to strengthen my correlation. Adding it extends the pattern. It verifies what I've been saying. Bigger houses have bigger price tags. So that's a good point to add to your data because it extends the pattern and it increases your correlation. One specific type of outlier is called a high leverage point. The high leverage point is a point that is an outlier primarily in the X direction. Now they're called high leverage points because they actually have leverage to change the linear regression model if we take them away. So imagine if I were to take away a point that has high leverage, again, an outlier in the X direction, that can actually change the linear regression model to move, either move up or move down. This is what we call influential points. Influential points are points that, if, if removed, substantially change the model. Whether they change the y-intercept, the slope, or the correlation, doesn't really matter. They change the model. Now, points that are outliers in the y-direction only don't necessarily have a ton of influence on that linear regression model. It's really those high leverage points, outliers in the x-direction, that have the ability to really change the slope of that model. Now, anytime you have an outlier in the y direction or in the x direction, they're going to weaken your correlation. So if you take them away, they're going to strengthen your correlation. Add them in, they're going to weaken your correlation. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But a high leverage points are the most concerning because they really do change the slope of that linear regression model. Here's a great example that will help you understand how an influential point changes the slope of the y. So here we see a point in purple that is clearly a high leverage point. It's an outline in the X direction. Its Y value is kind of actually right in the middle. Now, because this point is an outline in the X direction, it actually has the power to influence the line and pull the line closer to it. Remember that least squares regression line is trying to keep all the residuals as small as possible. 
it doesn't really want to have any big residuals. So oftentimes it will actually move closer to that high leverage point, trying to make it have a smaller residual. But in turn, that actually means the line actually doesn't fit the data very well. If I were to take away that point, if I were to get rid of this point, we would actually see that the best line would be a line maybe going through the data like this. So again, adding that point changes the slope, which also simultaneously means if I remove that point, it's going to change the slope. So again, these are all signs of influential points. They're outliers in the X direction, more slow than the Y. They actually appear to have a smaller residual because the line is so influenced by it, trying to give it a small residual. But if it's removed, the slope changes significantly. This is what we see as an influential point. Well, that's it for unit two. Hopefully you learned a lot, hopefully you remember a lot, and hopefully it was a really nice, fairly simple review that covers all the major things that you need to know, whether you're looking at two categorical variables or two quantitative variables. That's basically what this unit comes down to is those two topics, categorical variables, relationships between them, using a two-way table and segmented bar graphs, and scatter plots, analyzing the relationship between two quantitative variables. But keep in mind, I want to say this one more time to end this video. Even if you see a real, strong, great association between two variables, whether they be categorical or whether they be quantitative, that does not mean necessarily that causation is implied. Just because one variable is related to another does not mean that one variable causes another. Please keep that in mind. All right, hopefully you liked the video. Please make sure you check out my ultimate review packet. You can get to that website using the link in the description. It's got access to the study guide, the answer keys, multiple choice practice, free response practice, and much, much more. Enjoy. I'll see you later.